Okay, so um, updates for the end of the year. So this is uh, the, the, the time of, of year. Well, well, I spend most of time um, planning uh, for activities of, of next year. I mentioned um, last call that now we have a bunch of uh, different administration things that we need to uh, to improve processes to be more efficient in how we handle administrative staff uh, because well we are not such a small team anymore and we need to to have better, better processes or better operations in some areas so most most of my time this time is this week have been um, thinking and planning for that I wanted to do a presentation today with a like a little roundup of the year. I didn't uh, have enough time um, to, to, to finish it, but um, and next week probably everyone is going to be on vacation, so maybe it's not really worth it. Uh, so I'm going to probably do it in the first call of uh, the new year. Uh, so uh, to give you a bit of um, uh, where we are with different elements, like uh, core development, uh, V2, as you know, has been making progress. Uh, I already mentioned that we plan to do uh, I mean, a demo of the third build in uh, January. So we are still planning to do that. Um, uh, so that. Then we have um, been working on different products. As you know, Lingua is getting um, way better. Uh, you can see already lots of um, translations there uh, that you can pick now. Uh, so we know that the platform is not a uh, uh, it's not great i mean it's it was developed uh, almost i guess two years ago um and then there's lots of improvement opportunities to be done there but before spending resources in, in improving the lingua we are kind of wanting to test if the model works right if, if lingua actually solves a problem if it can be used by people if people enjoy it and then with some validation of that, then yes, I mean, we can, I would say at this point, we should like actually build it again from, from scratch. And um, as you know, Lingua started as a translation platform, but it's like a micro-tasking kind of a platform that could be used for lots of different, uh, uh, well, micro-tasks. But for now, we're just wanting to see if this model works. And then, yeah, maybe we will improve it. Uh, okay, so we have that. We have... Um, maybe I will let William uh, short. Uh, um, maybe maybe you can since it's maybe last call of the year. You can give a um, like a longer <laughs> explanation of uh, of the research on last year and what's coming up next. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've done a fair number of things. Uh, so I did a lot of research on like griefing factors and griefing in different contexts uh, to try to get some like general framework for how like how one should think about griefing and how one can appropriately analyze it. And then it can be applied to griefs and Claros. So we have some like description of like griefs on Claros in the, in the yellow paper, like delay, like the sort of like obvious delay grief where you like do frivolous appeals. There's also like a, a certain like griefs on the, on the, on the crowdfunding mechanism. Uh, so I thought about those, but then also sort of pulled back and like tried to come up with a model of like how griefs change the equilibria of crypto economic games. Uh, so I gave a talk about that at, at uh, Eve Dubai, and I have an academic paper on that that, you know, was coming out at some point. Uh, then I um, continued to do a lot of work on sort of social choice theory type things related to, like, what the best voting incentive systems are for, for a system like Claros. Uh, when jurors are deciding between, like, non-binary cases that involve lots of different choices and can be quite subtle, how can you design a voting and incentive system that doesn't encourage, like, vote splitting uh, or strategic voting or, like, you know, sort of, like, classic social choice theory kind of, like, pathological phenomena? Um, you know, so that, that's been ongoing work we've been doing for years, but, like, continuing to think about things like that. I have a paper that's coming that's like we've been working on related to um, impossibility theorems in that setting. So like what's kind of like what pathologies are unavoidable, which informs what you can try to do and what, what, what one can like hope for is like, you know, what is achievable uh, and then how we you know, like what, you know, what are the sort of trade offs we make within different incentive systems within those limits. Uh, the new big exciting thing that, you know, is like new this year. 
was a lot of research on soulbound tokens. Uh, so the Decentralized Society paper by by uh, Glenn Weil and uh, Olhaver and Buterin came out in the spring, uh, which um, they they envision this sort of ecosystem of soulbound tokens, uh, which among other things they talk about being used to weight funding to quadratic funding distributions. Uh, like uh, weight contributions to quadratic funding. Uh, and uh, this has inspired me and you know, some of our research and to ask, okay, like what they want is to have quadratic funding that kind of picks out groups uh, that are dis that have different points of view uh, and different experiences, different backgrounds. And you pick them out based on the fact that they have different collections of subbound tokens uh, and you give them more voice uh, because then you're going to have funding contributions, you know, you're going to be like waiting more funding contributions uh, from like different diverse groups of people. And there's like various reasons to believe that that gives you kind of better democratic, democratic input to get better, better grants. But like Claro's could do something similar where you have, um, you know, you kind of reweight juror selection uh, so that you try to give higher odds of being drawn to jurors that again have kind of like rare soulbound tokens or you know kind of distinct and different experiences as represented by their soulbound tokens and give them a higher chance of being drawn uh and particularly you know in, in a system like claros where you have juries that are thinking about a case um often communicating on telegram having some kind of like form of, of rudimentary deliberation there's a lot of evidence that shows that diverse groups of people have uh, come to better decisions. So it, it's it's useful for improving the decision-making quality of Claros, potentially at least, to to try to draw groups of, draw, draw groups of people that are more diverse like this, uh, have different experiences and different backgrounds. Uh, and then the like hard questions there are, okay, how can you design that system in a way that you weight people like this that is not exploitable? Like what kind of weighting functions are compatible with the existing crypto economic incentives of Claros? Uh, so we've been doing a lot of work on that. That is that is still ongoing. We don't have a perfect weighting system yet, uh, but like we're thinking about kind of like what the constraints are there and what are different possibilities, and that that will continue on into next year. Awesome, thank you. And uh, so I'm excited about this. There is this um, um, very well known theorem from from collective intelligence called the Hong and Page theorem that says that the more diverse the group of people that makes a decision. You know, the higher quality of that decision. So as you know, in Claros, we have typically I mean, ne never known um, who are these persons because um, as you know, they are just uh, Ethereum accounts. Um, so this also has a, a good um, thing, which is that, um, and this is something that I get asked a lot by professionals coming from the field of you know, law and arbitration. How do you make sure that um, the panel is diverse uh, because this is a problem in arbitration, um, in particular, in, uh, I mean, there is this idea that all the white men tend to be overrepresented in arbitration uh, panels. And so there is a bunch of um, um, initiatives in the world of arbitration to try to bring more, I mean, or women or I mean, other minorities into, into panels to have a better um, representation and reach better decisions in the end. And um, so this SBT idea is, um, I mean, maybe a great way to, to have some of this into, into Claro. So we are researching and we don't know where it's going. I mean, but uh, we will certainly learn um, a lot about, about this. Um, and maybe you want to mention, William, uh, again, the conference in Berkeley uh, next month. Yeah, so uh, there's this conference in, in Berkeley in January called uh, by um, called Plurality, uh, which is being organized by um, sort of the circle of people around Glen Weill uh, that uh, I'm going to be briefly speaking at. I have a five minute lightning talk uh, that I'm still preparing. I, I have to send them a draft uh, of my talk and I have it down to six minutes. So I, I need to crunch a little more, but like it's so I, I'm looking forward to speaking there uh, and um, talking to those people. Uh, I think uh, like the um, innovation minister from Taiwan is going to be there. Uh, I think Vitalik is going to be there. It's going to be like a lot of high level sort of people having inter that have interesting ideas around how, you know, we can make, 
just like add social layers to to blockchains so that we have applications that are beyond just these sort of like super financialized applications that we currently have uh and i i'm, I'm you know I, I expect very interesting discussions there yeah i mean uh, and we at Teros are pr very proud to be sponsors of the conference i mean this is going to be a really really cool place uh, to be and you know yeah there's going to be of the ten the I think innovation minister of Taiwan, then I think Vitalik is going to be there. Of course, Glenn Wild is the president of uh, this association. Um, and well, many, many more uh, very high level people from, well, the environment of radical market, we say. Um, so yeah, that's a really cool thing uh, going on. And also part of the team just uh, was in Australia about, uh, you know, this RMIT conference uh, uh, governing Web3 conference that is organized by this, by this university called R RMIT, which is one of the first universities that uh, started researching crypto economics. So Clement was there giving a game theory workshop. We had Jamilia there um, and other other team members. I think it was, yeah, Abir was there as well. He's also based in Hong Kong, so that's closer to him. Okay, so we had that um, from the point of view of, uh, of research. And by the way, so since we were mentioning Glenn White, so I think that the uh, podcast episode with Glenn Weil comes out today, right, uh, Jim? Yes, uh, yes. After the call, uh, the, uh, I'll, I'll post a link to the episode. It's a very interesting one, and uh, I'm very excited about uh, well this conference and the ideas that uh, Glenn Weil have been promoting. And it has everything to do with the uh, with governance and and making like good good decisions in in public you know cool um okay so um, we have um that um well we already reviewed the idea i mean um the two we already discussed a bit of products um some some of the things we're working on for next year is um Revamp a bunch of uh, our products. I already mentioned Weldingo. Um, Curate is going to have a, um, yeah, we're internally working to, I mean, uh, better define where we should focus it and, um, and how we should develop it uh, moving forward uh, because this is a really powerful tool and we can have much more impact. Um, then, of course, you know, SUSI <laughs> or Cleros Moderate, um, content moderation um, tool uh, for Telegram and soon also for Discord is almost uh, ready for prime time. Uh, I think in the coming weeks, we are going to push the final updates. And then this is kind of converging into, um, I would call it a suit, <laughs> suite of tools for governing, you know, DAOs, you know, we knew, we have over time developed these different uh, technologies that cover different um, aspects of uh, DAO governance from different crypto economic um, like primitives. And for next year, one of the things that we will try to do much more is how to turn this like into a, into products that can be offered to DAOs to um, solve you no. Know, let's say all of their governance uh, needs. For example, I mean, you are building a DAO about X, Y, Z. So, okay, you know, come, Kleros, come, come to Kleros and we can offer you, you know, uh, you ID verification uh, for you people. You have proof of humanity. You want um, some curation for your whatever. So we have curate. Then uh, you need content moderation for your DAO. Well, we have a content moderation. Then we have the governor. Um, you know, so all of these suits that are now kind of uh, um, a bit like scattered around, um, we are going to productize them way better and offer them with a much more, you know, compelling value proposition. Um, and this is going to come more or less at the same time of, of each two. So this is one of uh, also the priorities and that we have for next year. I mean, improving the, the commercial offering of, of our products. And um, as you know, uh, and you have seen Wagner <coughs> presentation, we have already more than 100 partnerships and, and, and you know, and also counting way more. So um, and this, I, this better way to offer our products is going to, to be a great um, push into that. 
So that's one of also one of the things that we are working quite, um, I mean, strongly internally. Um, maybe Jim, I don't know if there is a proof of humanity update to share. Um, no, we 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 are just uh, we we just need to to, to publish our, our draft of the constitution and and, and approve it, uh, and then we. Uh, we will be we will be ready to to continue with the forking process, uh, but not 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 many other news, uh, except that if you uh, just in case if if you get blocked from the other proof of humanity groups, uh, we just want to say that we you are welcome to to our group. <laughs> uh, yes. But um, yes, that's that's basically it. Uh, I'll share the uh, link of the. Uh, Guambian video about uh, integrations that uh, shows uh, how we we measure uh, integrations and a little bit uh, on how uh, how Guambian is uh, coordinating the, the the business development team uh, on how to pursue, pursue more integrations for for 2023. Uh, I believe yeah. it's uh, very interesting. Uh, like the, the, there, there's been a lot of pro, uh, of progress <laughs> that uh, may, maybe uh, it's not no, noticeable uh, because the, I, uh, they're, they're they're not like an increase in disputes, but uh, there's there is an increase in in, in adoption in, in this uh, in this manner. Um, uh, I, I believe you 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 know how to sp explain how we measure that, right, Ferico? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have two main metrics that we use to measure progress. One is, of course, the amount of disputes and more, more disputes creates more engagement by jurors, more, um, well, more fees of arbitration to be earned and, well, and all, all that. But not just that, no. Uh, arbitration system produces uh, good results for, for, for customers, even if there are no disputes, because the fact that the system is working uh, prevents people from behaving maliciously so that's how legal systems <coughs> work um, by securing property rights even if there is no not a dispute so one other thing is that we have partners which are like uh, securing lots of value with cleros but those um, th th that value doesn't typically go to a dispute you know in kind of insurance use cases there is a a clear of arbitration, which is rarely you know used, but it is still even if it's not used, it's still securing um, value. So this is the metric that we call like total value secured by Claros. So this is are the two um, main uh, metrics that we we try to optimize uh, in our work. Um, so one of the important things that we are going to have for next year is uh, we, we we want to have more like community involvement in uh, everything about business development. Um, now we have a team of business developers that is led by Wanyan that has been growing quite fast. Uh, but um, so it doesn't become a bottleneck. We want to have a system that can incentivize community members to well, help with um, with this. I mean, we still we are still figuring out what is the best way to do it and how the incentive system should work. But that's one of the of the goals. And generally speaking, we also want uh, more community involvement in, in all of the different activities of of Cleros. So that's one of the things that are I mean in going into our planning into these last um, weeks of, of the year and some stuff that we want to start executing on uh, in 2023. Um, and I guess uh, that's it for for today. I as I mentioned, I will. Uh, make a presentation more organized uh, with uh, what we can expect for next year. Next week, we probably are not going to have the community call because everyone is in you know, vacation. Um, but uh, yeah, but we will probably do this um, uh, the, the, the presentation maybe in the first call of uh, of January. And I guess that's it for for today. So guys, Merry Christmas to whoever uh, celebrates Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah to people that celebrate Hanukkah and all of the rest. Uh, and uh, happy holidays. Um, 